Hello, I'm welcome back to friends, it's me, Odo, and I am back in my Pathfinder Kingmaker game. Um, last time we started the um, Barony, we got the Barony, and now we are here in our throne room, which is really big. I mean, they built it rather far. <laughs> Where the uh, palace uh, or the, the fort of the Fort God was, so it was really fast because it's all in in stone, and I'm not sure how they did it that fast. Anyway, um, we heard something about our realm, and now we have our first. Um, What's it called? Not very dense. I don't know. Our audience. <laughs> we have our first audience, and uh, uh, there is Jord Captain, who has um, one problem. Um, he wants us to think about the people of the Elf and the things that happen there. Now there is a new woo. Tristan and I believe the curse is not simply a curse of its own accord. There is a place near the capital rumored by the locals to be cursed. Tristan and I visited the dreadful place and we felt the same utter sense putridness as the temple of the elk. Okay. What is this place? Where is it? <coughs> There is a old hilltop not far from here, to the north of the capital. Its crown is entirely barren of life. The locals believe that rituals glorifying the dark gods were held there back in ancient times. There is no longer any trace of such rituals, but the air around the hilltop is heavy to the point of stifling. This place is like a rotting wound. Mortil. Okay, there is the boss on top. Yeah, we will have to go a few times in the future and fight monsters. And this wound will undoubtedly open again. Christian and I felt something approaching, something ominous. The curse will soon return to plague us once more. I swear by Aristil. I will go there as soon as I'm able. I would, have, I would be happy to accompany you, but I would not expect to see anything new there at the present. I agree with Tristan. We have been to this hilltop. It's barren, but filled with a dense atmosphere of unease. Well, what do you suggest? Okay. The curse wall grew in strength and we predict it will reach the peak of its strength in about one month. That's when we should visit the bold hilltop and resolve this issue. Okay. For now, we can only wait and prepare. Okay. We beg your pardon, your grace, for intervening with you, getting the grasp of your barony. I'm sure you have even more pressing matters at hand right now. Yeah, of course. Okay. As our name is Smarty Bartfast, I would say this is Norway or Fjordland. Fjordland. I'm not sure if some one of you knows what Smarty Bartfast was. 
Okay. So there are five projects that we can do. Uh, and four advisors we can pick. There is a advisor for the regions. Ooh, we could take Octavia as a region or Bavaria. Interesting. Not this this castle guy. Where is it? There it is. So the this castle guy can be military advisor. Interesting. So, who can we choose as council? Only Tristan? Yeah, but then we'll take him. There are no candidates for this. High Priest, Jod, and Harem. Does his best to solve problems without disrupting local traditions? Harem favors Anya. Yeah. We'll take care of him. Let's see, who can we choose as general? Regongar, Miri, or Castle? Hmm. Strive to help those in need? Ugh. Probably don't want castle there. Direct. Direct. Hmm. In my first game I chose Ragongar and he's he's a plus five here. So this would be best probably here as well. So we should should take Miri. Just because it's so unlikely that he would be a general. So, and here, in my first game, I chose Nevadar, as he was much better than these two. As he strives to follow the letter of the law, she's the one I'll take this region. Can be done somewhere. This old man can be done somewhere. Okay, that's good. Regions. Um, we could claim the outskirts, which would be great because this would be that it costs one hundred and fifty. Billing points, and we only have 450 right now. Okay, mm, let's see at the project that we can do. Trade need a advisor. Okay, our merchants. Okay, this costs 1,500 building points. This is a lot. Terrible, but it's really good. This one's this one key's offers offer. High priest of Erisil, the master of has a strong interest in spreading the stack god's faith across the region. He is eager to build a shrine dedicated to Erisil in our in your land, that his own expense. If you wish to gain a useful ally and a place of worship for Aristotle. Okay, 
Uh, Harem could do this. We could pillage the Temple of the Elk. Also end these points and get us 150. Hmm. Or restore it, which costs us 100 building points and gives us plus 2 divine. Do we need this divine? Also by harem. Maybe we could pillage this temple. Here we could do this. And this would also take a religious guy. Awesome. 50. Okay. These are the projects. There are no events. This is good. So, we will do this with Harem. And we will do this with Amiri. Should we do this already? Cost us 150 building points. Uh, before we do this, um, nothing is built yet. Yet, let's add to this place. Um, There will be a shrine for, for free later on. Um, normally it would be good to have a, a long house in the middle. I'm pretty sure that this would be good. Affects artisan shop, affects more or less everything. We can pass one community, divine, and culture. Herbalist house. Um, can be upgraded to our chemist laboratory. Requires town. A general store of an economy when adjacent to tavern. We need a tavern as well. Place for eating, drinking, and asking. Most about the local rumors, plus one to relationship in relation to an adjacent to the long house, plus one to espionage, and adjacent to barrack. So, tavern like here, long house in the middle, shop here, forge foundry and smithy. What about the barracks? What do you bring? Building to house city guards, militia, and military forces plus one to stability when adjacent to a long house. Hmm. Long house, where are you? Artisan shop. We 
can't build these. Rex, Citadel, Garrison, Brown Temple in Shrine. Ooh, Shrine. A small Shrine or similar holy site. Plus one to divine when adjacent to a monument and plus one to loyalty. Long house, okay. So we'll probably build the tavern on the corner and the barracks and the shrine. Okay, let's do this. Let's build a long house here. Let's build a tavern like here. Let's build a shrine. No. Shop. Ah, this was stupid. <sighs> and the barracks here. Where are the barracks? And the shrine will be for free. So we won't build it right now. Windmill, a wind driven mill for grind grinding grain, plus one for community if located in a settlement with a granary or brewery. Can only be built in a separate block, like there. What's the view doing? Workshops for docking ships and tending cargo and packing that can only be built in water slot. Facts lumber yard. Mm -hmm. Plus one to relation when located in a settlement with, with these. Since a grove cannot be built in the settlement housing a lumber yard. Who needs a sacred grove? It's rather cheap. Let's build also a lumber yard here. Okay. So this was this. If we start this, yeah. Yeah, now the outskirts are part of our kingdom. Okay, four events. First of all, we have a success and we got a shrine in your capital free of job. Yay! And we got a lot of stuff there. Okay, projects. We can't do this and why can't we do this? Harem is free now. Okay. But... Yeah, of course, this doesn't work well. This requires 45 days to resolve, really. So, event. There are not two kinds of events. Ones that, um, that we have to do, 
and ones that we sh that we can do. So this is a problem that we have to do. And weed is taking over more and more farmland. One must persuade the peasants to stop fighting with the peasants. Uh, Tristan and Heron can do this. Okay. What about that? That's also a problem. Mysterious cult promoting idleness and debauchery has emerged in the region. This depravation must be stopped. And we can put Mary and Harry on this. Harem has a request. Okay, we need to speak to Harem. And another cult awaits us. So. Mm. If we did this with Mallory, Harem would be free to do the um, this project. This costs us 50 base points, brings us divine plus two, but it costs a really long time. Okay, let's start. Why not? This is done by you. We've got a plus seven and we need a fifteen. So an um, eight or higher. This should be good. This is a DC thirteen. So we need a nine or higher. If we take this, we have a plus nine, so we need a four or higher. Oh, let's start this again. Okay. For these, we just have to go out and talk to the guys. So who's this guy? Oh, it's Christian. Greetings, Baroness. Sorry to take you away from your other affairs. Yeah, well, what's what's your interest? My people need me. Okay. When the stolen lands were freed from the stag law, the people sighed in relief. But many are still confused by their swift change of fortune. Truth be told, they simply don't know what to think of their new baroness, nor what to expect of you. Will you be a fair ruler for all, or only for those with wealth and status? Well, let us reassure your people. Show them where your favor truly rests. Perhaps a small celebration would help to win them over. Of course, you could spend the same amount on a luxurious dinner for the welfare of your barony, but I recommend organizing a fair for the common people, the ones upon whose shoulders your power truly resides. Hmm. Community plus two. I'll hold a fair for the common people. I want them to know what I hold them closest to my heart. Economy and relations plus two. If we take the dinner, or we have to arrange anything. Hmm. I mean, I'm not sure what would be us right now. I mean, community is good, but culture we really don't need. Economy is also good, but relations, I'm not sure if we need that. I mean, if he, if he chooses, he chooses.
at least it's really cheap to gain something. So twenty uh, building points are out of the question. Um, yeah, whatever. So, what do you want? Karim looks embarrassed. He runs his fingers through his beard and clears his throat a few times. And he speaks at last. I heard. Not that it's important, but, well... I heard that an ancient trade road built by the gods of the Five Kings Mountains runs through these lands. I don't know what happened to them or when they went. Unforgiving time spares no one. The road itself is still here, and possibly not only the road. Five Kings Mountains. <laughs> yeah, so it's the uh, Warren Kingdoms. Well, slightly but first, I have a request. If you find any Dwarven ruins in the area, I'd like to see them with my own eyes. I should probably, but it's like a wound that's never healed. You know, it will only hurt more, but you still need to scratch it. Of course, it's foolish and vain, but still, I would look at them. Of course, Erim. If I find any blah 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 blah. Whatever. That's easy. And to step. Jolt again. A grace. I was at Olex trading post recently and I noticed old Bokken just standing there. Most unfortunate after all, Lord Grumbler is a very knowledgeable alchemist. However, he has no use for this skill for his skills, since the locals need nothing more than the simple of healing potions. And then it struck me, why don't you hire him as your court alchemist? This his auctions and tinctures would certainly prove most useful to you. Also, it might be cheaper than simply buying from him or some other merchant. Hmm? You're truly right, Jod. This is a good idea. Talk to Bokken. Let's see. So we did these two events. Let's see. Um, support the counselor's endeavors. Okay, but we can't do it anyway because you are you are in doing stuff. Okay, so there is nothing we can do right here. So. Let's look around in the city, if we find something interesting, like talk to you. Uh, your Grace, I'd like to know more about you. I prefer your Grace. Um, I grew up alone on the streets of Rastor. I know nothing of my parents. More than likely that my mother just wanted to be rid of me. Probably left me somewhere in an ally and a, as a baby. And I don't feel I have the right to blame her. I don't remember how I survived. My first memory is of sneaking into someone's backyard. Must have been three or four and trying to steal food from a cat.
Lady Jamandiel Dory herself brought me into the family. She picked me up off the streets when I was about 14. I was fighting some Lord Guardsmen. Their master had expressed his wish in a most inappropriate manner to acquaint me with his female wolfhound in the hopes of producing offspring. Okay. I was at that. I was at what would rightly be called a disadvantage. I saw a flashing beam of light reflect off a long sword. What happened next was too fast for me to follow, but all three of my torturers fell to the ground, a single woman standing above them. She turned to the Lord and called me after him, and just what is it you are doing in here? Castle an almost reverently genuine awe in his I had never seen a Rostovic noble so afraid. But he was also almost reverent, and this law was a close companion to the mayor at that. At the time, I had no idea who this woman was, but I couldn't keep myself from rushing after her, well, hobbling, really, and pleading with her, teach me, please, teach me. What's it like? for you living among humans. It didn't do your grace. I was born and raised in Rostov. I didn't know a single word of orc. I devoted my entire life to pro proving myself what is the dead name Aldori, but to most people I'm still a half First and foremost, anything else is secondary. It infuriated me when I was younger, but with age, I've learned to accept my fate. To me, I'm simply a captain. The speech that I came from Restov, who became the student of Sword and the Aldori. Nothing more, nothing less. Okay, he's humble. He's probably not betraying us. I mean, yes, he will betray us, but not because of himself, but because of the Aldoris. May I be service your grace? What's the situation between the Eldori and the Royal House of Sodom? He's impassive, but his speech becomes slower, more deliberate. Different in nature and spirit. They are as water and stone, snake and an eagle. When Coral the Conqueror came to our lands, the Sotovas didn't even attempt to defend. Up the crown in exchange for positions of power in the new court, along with the safety of their lands. The Eldori went to war and lost. I cannot even say valiantly lost. The damage inflicted on Northland's army by the red dragons of Coral the Conqueror, well, it was slaughter. A crushing defeat. Hmm, hey. Um, yeah, he doesn't like the sort of us, of course. What can you tell me about the river kingdoms? In time's path, they were little more than a nest of bandits. Mm. Frankly, that hasn't really changed. Mm. King Irobeti rose to power too quickly and too easily. I would recommend your grace take great caution with him. Hilte? Okay. Hmm. In Restov, I spent 
nearly as much time studying historical chronicles as I do training with the sword. What would you like to discuss that way? Hmm, that's a story written in blood, Aldori blood mostly. In the beginning, Brevoy was too independent of him. How Sotova reigned over Isia and the Aldori ruled Rostov. We were not peaceable neighbors. Isia's soul, soil was too poor to sustain its population, and its people were too cruel and proud to simply stand by and watch as their neighbors prospered. I'd be willing to bet that the rest of the northern walls still hold a few marks left by sort of soldiers during their frequent raids. Mm hmm He's about the sword mods, but I'll try to convince. I think so as I blah 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 blah. Aaron Syrian. He has a notorious squabble and duelist, but at the time he wasn't as skillful as he thought. After losing a fight against the local gang leader, the Baron was the one who issued the challenge. He went into exile to hide his shame. But that was just the beginning. No one knows where Syrian wandered. But a few years later, he returned to Rosslyn and cha a changed man. He challenged that same gang leader to another duel and bested him handily. Aaron then declared an open challenge. Anyone who could defeat him would be rewarded handsomely. After that, not a month would pass without Tyrion seeing another challenger. Renowned fighters and experienced warriors came and went, but not, not a single one could pass the Baron. In those years, Tyrion took on his new name, Aldori, but many people re preferred to call him simply the Sword Baron. The very same. His heirs inherited the secrets of his ruling style, along with the name Aldori. Ever since the name has been passed down from master to student, along with the title Swordlord, Aldori is simultaneously a family and an alliance. Swordlords usually teach their own children, but many of us were brought in from outside the family. Occasionally, you can even find a half orc fox thing. Or two. Mm -hmm. uh, certainly, Your Grace, to the best of my ability, I've learned from Lady Aldori not only the art of the sword, but also the ability to inspire. I could apply myself in the role of military advisor. Thank you learned what I needed. Okay, so here's our thing. We take everything. Oh, we have camping supply in there. Because next we will go To this elf guy. And 
and buy a lot of the stuff. man standing before you resembles an elf, but a very old one. His face is wrinkled and his beard is as white as mountain snow. man seems to be completely blue. Uh, to be consumed in thoughts, he mutters a melody, swaying back and forth slightly to its rhythm. man shudders briefly and stops singing. His mouth opens and closes a few times bringing to mind a fish brought ashore. Ah, who is there? Is that you, your grace? Who are you? I'm an elf from Kionin. My name is not important. I'm the storyteller, collector of stories. I collect unknown legends of ancient times. Long ago, I was a smith in Kionin. I know the fortress burned out my eyes, but I'm grateful for it. I could be. I would yet forge suits of armor for Yadara's guards. Instead, I have stepped on the path of an adventurer and gatherer of ancient legends. Many peoples are long dead, their homes crumble to dust, and their bodies turn to ash. Only legends can still tell us of their triumphs and defeats and fears. I would be so interested to hear the stories told about us after our demise. I've always been drawn to the stolen lands where countless expeditions, armies and even kingdoms have met their ultimate untimely ends. When I learned of a new colony being founded in the heart of these lands, I knew I wanted to be so I made the journey here. A common question, despite my unusual looks, I am an elf. And an old one, yes, perhaps older than any other elf of Kionin. However, I doubt my age alone is responsible for my appearance. <clears throat> I keep the stories of many people and races, some forever gone from the days of Galarian. But they live on in my memory and my heart. When I accept this new story, I lock it within myself, bearing the weight of its words and the emotions they invoke. I sometimes think that I probably should have died long ago, but some incomprehensible forces keeping me alive and granting me the ability to continue my quest to tell a story. Be it divine. Of elf-goods. I'm grateful either way. How could you tell it was me? It's not hard to recognize a ruler by the way he she walks. No one in here steps as confidently as you, your grace. Yeah, of course. Alright, would you care to trade stories with me? I'm a collector, not a trader. If I share a story with you, you receive the power to pass it further, changing or embellishing it, whether willingly or not. Can I be certain you will keep my stories intact in their absolute purity? Sorry to have points for several moments. No, I do not think so. At least not yet. These legends are the most precious, valuable, valuables of the small, last remnants of ancient our beacons illuminating the way to the past, allowing us to meet generations long gone. I cannot let their light fade. The path to the past must not be lost. But I can offer you a deal, Your Grace. If on your journeys you discover items that come from eras past, bring them to me. And if my eyes can see the stories that these relics hold, I will gladly share them with you. Okay. How interesting. May I, your grace, he gently touches the items from your pack. 
from a non-existent country, then Coral the Conqueror mastered Rostman. Having claimed it for Brevoy, he prohibited the issuance and use of such coins. Both ordinary folk and the Aldori sword lords were required to use new coins decorated with the Coral's profile, but no one was quick to be rid of this these prohibited coins, oh no. In many houses they still store boxes and hold chests of such coins waiting for the day when Rostland declares its independence. Okay, this was a lot of money. And what is this? I hear the voices of trees smell the scent of fresh leaves, a third mark. Is it not? I would be happy to purchase it from you. Okay. Storyteller weighs the soldier's egg in his palm. A soldier does not ask where the banners of war are headed. He or she goes to battle, dies, and leaves it to others to decide whether the, the course was Egg belonged to one of the many warriors who helped establish the glory of the Talon Empire. If you could, would permit me, I would gladly purchase it from you. Okay, this guy's really, really rich. Songs of brave heroes who performed their feats here before you. I sense you would be interested to hear their story. These lands took many lives and many legends. I can now tell you of a distant expedition undertaken by a group of Gravic heroes to a place known the Drowned Trees. Okay. Trade the whole set of items for their story. Can you hear it calling to us? Let us hurry. Okay. Tell me about the Drowned Trees. This gains up 600 speed, so it's okay to get old stuff. I hear row locks creaking, river water splashing, bushes rustling and arrows shooting <laughs> through the air. I feel an invincible will, a cold resolution to finish what's been started, no matter the Chain armor clings to my body, and my young hands grip a sword tightly. I'm the leader of a group of brave souls set off to the stolen lands to clear them from bandits once and for all. Okay. We sail on a large freight boat. It serves as bait for the bandits, who keep throwing themselves at it, only to find death. Death as inglorious as life they live. From time to time, we manage to catch a prisoner. While our inquisitor talks to them, I go to the stove, shutting my ears to their cries. I remind myself that these are scum, drenched in blood to the elbow. I think upon our curse, cause, not curse. Freedom for my homeland and an independent Rostland. I feel my goosebumps rise with a pitiful cry. With each pitiful cry, I want to seal myself and be strong. Okay, please continue. At night, it seems a whole army is attacking our boat. Far too many for us to fend off, but luckily, we don't have. While they battle monsters, we've summoned in a pitch black magical darkness. We drink the potions we've prepared and dive under the water. The scum break into the hold, but instead of treasure, they find the final surprise. The work of a Rostovic alchemist, a trap, a dozen barrels of highly explosive oils. We watch from a safe distance as the boat is blown to pieces in a deafening explosion. Everything has gone according to plan. The more who 
die here, the fewer will meet in the drowned trees. We march through the forest and camp to regain our strength. Our oh, Inquisitor discovered everything, even the location of the secret entrance. Today we rest. Tomorrow the bandit king will draw his final breath. Yes, even if you sneak in the bed, <laughs> Continue. We trudge through muddy waters. Suddenly a giant log studded with blades falls from above. I managed to stagger back, but the paladin who walked alongside me is now a gory sight, spread thin across the ground. The next moment, a monstrous creature emerges from the darkness, a twisted cross between fish and monkey. Its clawed hand reaches out effortless, melting, effortlessly melting away the Inquisitor's flesh then ripping out her heart. This is the king of the bandits, Argus Rune. The bandit we captured did not mourn. But the secret passage he spoke of led right into the underwater lair of his master. I bury my terror deep in my soul. There was no time for weakness. There were only four of us left, and we were we are gasping for air by the time the freak's lifeblood stains the water. We leave the beheaded body on the dry land and then retreat and recover. Only now I allow my hands to tremble, my breath to raise unbidden, my tears to flow. Okay, continue. The next night we return the same way. We swim up to the surface and quietly gather our bearings. Above us loom the drowned trees, enormous dead trunks emerging from the water, riches crisscrossing their branches. The air is filled with the sound of battle. Having lost their king, the bandits now. Better each eye of her power, and we are ready to join the fight. We leave the dawn. At dawn, behind us, smoke rises up to the sky. Only two of us remain, the priest and I. We form the victory tastes of death, cinders and swamp wind. I ask him, tell me, yes, Vanki, was it worth it? He puts his hand on my shoulder and says, Yes, Jamandu, now the stolen lands will be ours. I wish I believed him. Hmm. So, Jamandi Aldori and this Esvenki guy were here before. Thus, the expedition to the drowned trees came to an end. I must admit, it was no easy feeling for me to stand in the place of the daring woman. The steel of her soul was colder than ice. As once cleared the stolen lands of bandits, why must we do it all over again? Death of Dargut Drone and destruction of the drowned trees weakened the bandits, but not for long. The paladin who died was a noble. It was he who was supposed to claim the stolen lands and send it in his troops, while Jamandi sought another candidate or a priest capable of performing a resurrection ritual. A new bandit emerged in the destroyed fortress. Banks of the dark water. Within the year, within the year, the stone lands were swarming with gangs once more. Some people become legends in their own lifetime. Jamandi has performed many glorious feats. Thank you for the story, storyteller.
AI, the storyteller gently touches the item string. The scorched piece of metal, part of a curious artifact known as the necklace of double crosses, inside it a sense of story of many deeds, not heroic, but low and maleficent. If you find all seven of its fragments, I will be able to restore the artifact and recount its inglorious story. Okay, seven of the artifact. Could you tell me one? Blah blah blah. Okay. So let's see. One, two, three, four, five. Two more of these scorched fragments. So this, this, and this he didn't tell us anything about. Ancient tomb. We acquired this in the ancient tomb. This in the old sycamore caves. In the old sycamore deaths. In the Fawn Fort and in Old Sigmore. Okay, um, my dear friends, we will stop for today. I hope you enjoyed it. See you soon. Bye.